Hey everybody, it's time for a Rotto Rules run through with Ryan, and today we've got the Whatnot Cabinet. So, Ryan, how do I play this? Tell me all about it. Yeah, sure, Rado. You're not going to have any trouble with this one at all because it's a cinch to teach and learn. So this is the Whatnot Cabinet, and this video is sponsored by Pencil First Games, who sent along this prototype, which is actually pretty darn close to finished, it looks like. It's a pattern matching, set collecting game for one to four players. Now, if you want to see how it gets set up, skip ahead to the end of the video. Otherwise, stick around and let me show you how to play. So you and your friends play curio collectors, filling their cabinets with little found objects they discover on their walks along beaches and trails. Every turn, you'll find and place two objects into your curio cabinet, and you'll score points for specific arrangements. The journey board determines how you get to choose your two objects. The options get better further along the board, but choosing those spots also puts you behind in turn order. Special curiosity cards put you in a race to score extra points with certain cabinet configurations. At the end of the game, whoever has scored the most points from positioning their little ornaments to create the best whatnot cabinet wins. Everyone begins the game with an empty cabinet. Determine a start player randomly, and that player puts his or her pawn on the first space of the journey board, and in clockwise order, everyone else fills the rest of the spots. The columns below depict the actions you can take on your turn. The actions are kind of independent of the turn order spaces above. On your turn, you'll put your pawn on one of these action spaces that no other player has chosen and do the thing. The actions get more and more beneficial as they move to the right of the board, but the catch is that at the end of the round, your pawn goes into the turn order slot above the space you chose. So if you take the best action spot on this turn, you have to choose last on your next turn. Below the journey board is a set of four face-up tiles called the outdoors. Every action space has you choosing two tiles for your cabinet in different ways. If you choose this space, you draw three tiles, take two of them, and discard the third face down into the discard pile. On this space, you draw two tiles, you keep one, and you put the other in the outdoors. You choose your second tile from any of the face-up outdoors options. Here in the third column, you draw a tile and add it to the outdoor display. Then you grab two tiles from those face-up options. Column 4 is similar, except you're adding two tiles to the outdoors to give yourself an extra option. And in the spot at the end of the board, you scrap all the face-up tiles and pop up four new ones and choose two of those. When you choose one of the columns, every step listed is mandatory. And when your turn is over, the player whose pawn is next in line gets to choose a column, and so on until the end of the round. There are two special tile types hidden inside the draw bag. This special action tile does almost the same thing as column 5. You sweep the outdoors, you deal out four new tiles, and you take one of them. Column 5 will let you take two of them. Oh, then you discard the special action tile. This one lets you draw a random face down tile and put it in your cabinet. Hang on to this special action tile because it gets you a point at the end of the game. Now, if you don't want to play these special action tiles, you don't have to. You can leave them in the outdoors and let other players pick them on their turns. The moment you collect a single tile, you have to place it somewhere in your whatnot cabinet immediately. So you can't grab your two tiles and then decide where to place them. It's tile, place, tile, place. A tile has to go in an empty spot in your cabinet. And once it's laid, it's played. Tiles you place are stuck there for the rest of the game. The objects you collect come in five different colors and five different types. The columns in your cabinet are concerned with colors, so if you line up four tiles of the same color, you get a four-point chit. If you fill up a column and the objects are all uniquely colored, then you take a two-point chit instead. Rows, on the other hand, are concerned with object types. If you fill a row with three objects of the same type, leaves, crystals, bottles, shells, or animals, you get a three-point chit. If you fill up a row and all three objects are of a different type, you get a one-point chit. Of course, it's possible to blow it. If you fill a column and some of the objects are the same color, but some aren't, you get one of these zero scoring dud tokens. The same with the rows. If two objects match, but one doesn't, that's a dud. You have a few more opportunities to pick up points while you play. Each game, one of these wonder cards gets dealt to the table. It gives you one point for each object in your cabinet that matches its type at the end of the game. So if the bottle wonder is drawn, Everyone gets one point for every bottle they've collected at the end of the game. 
Then there are these curiosity cards. You'll randomly deal five of them to the table at the beginning of the game. They prescribe different patterns that you can try to match in your cabinet. On your turn, if you meet the conditions of a curiosity card, you get to claim the card and score it at the end of the game. So it's a race. The first to meet it gets it. And if you plan really well, you can potentially nab multiple curiosity cards on your turn. Once everyone has had a turn, discard all of the tiles from the outdoors. Move all of the pawns to the top of the journey board, directly above the columns everyone chose, and deal out four new tiles. The game ends after six rounds. Count up the points you've earned on the chits beside each row and column in your cabinet. Add any points on the curiosity cards you've claimed, plus one point for each of these special action tiles you took. Count up the number of objects you have that match the wonder card, and take one point per. Some of the tiles have these little crowns on them. Each crown tile in your cabinet is worth an extra point. If, at the end of the game, your pawn ends up in one of the first three spaces on the journey board, you get extra points. In a two-player game, if you have both of your pawns in these spaces, you get extra points for both of them. You can use the extra point tokens to help you tally up the scores if you want to. After you tally up all the points, if there's still a tie, the zero-scoring blank tokens break the tie. If two or more players are still tied, whoever has the leftmost pawn on the journey board wins the game. To set up the game, put the journey board on the table. Randomly determine a start player whose pawn goes in the first space. Everyone else places their pawns clockwise from the start player. In a two-player game, both players get two pawns. The starting player's pawns go here and here, while the other player takes the middle two spaces. Each player gets to take two turns per round in a two-player game, so the game will end after three rounds instead of six. Randomly deal out five curiosity cards and one wonder card. Shuffle the tiles and deal four tiles to the outdoors. In the first round, if you deal any of these special action tiles, shuffle them back into the stack or into the bag and deal out new tiles until you have four regular objects. For a more advanced two-player game, you can start by weeding out the 27 tiles marked with the little flower. Everyone takes an empty curio board, and play begins with the starting player. You can also play the Whatnot Cabinet by yourself. Set up the game like you would for a two-player game. Choose two pawns to play, and two other pawns to represent your rival trinket collector. Your pawns go on spaces two and four, while your rival's pawns go on one and three. Shuffle the rival deck and place it near your player board. Unlike with multiplayer games, it's okay if you deal special action tiles to the table in the first round. You and your rival both play two turns each like you would in a two-player game. Your rival goes first. When it's the rival's turn, flip over the top card of the rival deck. Put the rival's pawn on the space indicated by the card. If there's already a pawn there, follow the arrow and move the pawn to the next space over until you reach a free space, wrapping around the board if you need to. The bottom of the rival card will tell you how many tiles to discard from the outdoors. If you ever reach a point where there are no tiles left during your turn or your rivals, pop one tile out to the outdoors. By default, at the end of every turn your rival takes, add one tile to the outdoors. Whenever it's your turn, you get bonus points for choosing one of the first three columns. Three points if you place here, and then two and one points for the second and third columns. You score your cabinet and claim curiosity cards just like you would in a normal game, but at the end of each round, you have to choose two curiosity cards that you haven't claimed and flip them over. You can't claim them anymore. If you ever get down to only one face-up curiosity card, you have to flip it over. Then you move all the pawns up to the top of the board as usual. When the third round is over, score all your points, then give yourself three, two, or one points for your pawns that ended up in the first, second, or third columns. Track your score on this chart to find out how you did. And now you're ready to play the Whatnot Cabinet. Thanks, Ryan. I think I've got it. And if you want to watch me play a run through or just learn more about the game, you can follow the links on the page or down in the show notes in five, four, three, two, one.